thought you already had. Sorry. Welcome to the Risk Working Group for July 14th, 2022. We're discussing OSPOs. <laughs> okay. Um, and so Sophia just had a brief point about how complex and federated the OSPO effort is at an organization the size that she works at. Um, and David was going to add. Yeah, I mean, I certainly have not seen every OSPO in the universe, but the OSPOs that I've interacted with, I, I suspect would say something similar. Usually they're not like the owner of all the software projects. Um, you know, they're, they, they interact with, they, they try to help devise the policies involving open source software, for example. Um, but usually the projects for actually say developing software are all around an organization or certain parts of an organization. Um, and the OSPOs are typically in more of a, a supportive role Although, you know, you know, maybe more demanding in certain areas like, you know, oh my gosh, serious legal risks. Um, I, I'd like to think, and Sophia, you can tell me if I'm wrong, um, that over time, lots of organizations have gotten a little smarter. And so some of these stupid, uh, stupid and dangerous uh, licensing tricks are becoming less of an issue. I mean, it's, you know, usually because there's a, somebody who knows the OSPO and knows, wait, wait, wait. There's a bright line legally. Here's how to here's how to do things that are are you know that achieve what you want to do without being doing something insane from a legal perspective. <laughs> I mean, I would hope that would be the case, but I think interestingly enough, when I look at the to do groups OSPO survey, the like number one priority for starting a new OSPO has to do with open source culture and collaboration and not licensing risk and compliance, which I would say most certainly organization does and has a lot of experience in, but I, from that survey, that element was farther down the list of priorities. But, but that, I found I, that I guess somewhat I, surprising. I, yeah, no, I, I'm actually agreeing with you. Uh, I think basically, you know, historically, that was one of the Back main up. reasons. Sean missed what element? The legal, legal oh, yeah. risks. Uh, you know, historically, that was one of the bigger reasons. And I think, it's not that the problem has ne has stopped existing entirely, but increasingly organiz businesses, organizations are trying to take advantage of and build on from a positive perspective as opposed to necessarily uh, avoiding screw ups. I mean, avoiding screw ups is a good thing too, but um, that I think the need's not eliminated, but the need has lessened as people have gotten more aware. It, and maybe I didn't, hopefully my clarification made some sense. <laughs> so I, I think that the open source community is learning to focus on solutions and enabling. Right. Than, so for example, Renovate uh, is so it's very similar to Dependabot, but it pitches itself very differently. The way it pitches itself is that it offers solutions. Yeah. And, and in, in fact, in general, I think organizations that, provide solutions, I think this is frankly just general, a general truth, are tend to be more helpful, and more more effective and uh, make the medicine a lot easier to go down as opposed to, you know, we're, we're here to slam the hammer on you. <laughs> so that makes sense. Um, I also feel like, Sean, the, the way that you asked the question was an interesting, just coming back to the very beginning, because I feel like when I first joined Chaos, and looked at the various working groups and where I think thought where I should be involved in or could have things to offer. I saw this working group as the one that was most aligned to understanding the risk and relationship between different types of entities, whether or not you're an open source community or a corporate organization um, and sort of looking at all facets of risk and risk is a, I mean, we, we've talked about all, all the ways that you can expand and interpret how comprehensive it can be, but it affects all of us in a way more so than some of the other working groups that are much more centric on explicitly community goals and measurements versus risk is broader than that and can apply to the economic or corporate or project interest. So I know that had nothing to do with the to-do group, but that was like two years ago, Sophia looking at chaos. And I, I think, I think our discussions have have reflected that, to to some degree. And I think that the two group probably tries to represent those wider interests as well. 
although I haven't engaged with them directly very much. So that's an outsider looking in and, you know, with this, with this, and I know that the things that I think about really are driven by the work that I do with Augur and Ospos and the work, the conversations we have in this group, because they do tend to reach beyond the basic activity metrics that are longstanding and open source. They do tend to be um, sort of the out front newer ways of talking about open source health and sustainability. To act, I think I'm just amplifying what you said, Sophia, and decorating it with my own experience. So with so with that in mind, there's a uh, Anna Jimenez is organizing an OSPO in person series of events that I'm. It's a little ambiguous to me. I missed the first meeting, but I think it may involve actually. Uh, having some OSPO discussions at events around the world, uh, I think the first one may be slated in Stockholm. It's unclear to me if that means physical presence or virtual presence, but but I think that there is an interest in you know new OSPOs, especially understanding the the scope of what they might be responsible for. And I think our working group has has some things to offer, and I wanted to bring that connection that I'd made individually to the attention of this working group for for feedback and also I'd be happy to invite anyone interested in participating in those discussions even though I don't know what they are yet uh, to to do so the next one is next week on Thursday in the morning Eastern time I have a link I I, I, uh, I found this link uh, over in the to do Slack, um, but I don't see the particular announcement. I would just be interested in hearing how it goes. I don't know if I can make time for it, but okay. I'm also just re- like, yeah, what, what time here, is this yeah. anyway? Can you repeat uh, that it, time? Sure, it is at. Sorry, look at my calendar on the recording here. It's at 8 a.m. Eastern time on Friday the 22nd. 22nd. I think I've got a conflict. I wonder because I I feel like, so is the to-do group involved in that or is that separate from them? This is the to-do group organizing this. I see, I see. Okay. So then there would be overlap then with... OSPOCon and the relationship to the LF, because I know the to-do group community and that are fairly intertwining. Yeah, I think I think there would be. Um, and I'm happy to share the, the in, I'm, I'm happy to just add this to a, a calendar that we keep or put the, uh, put the, let me just stop my share for a minute so you don't get to see all my daughter's doctor appointments on the video recording. Um, I'll just, uh, I'm going to put this in the risk channel in Slack. Um, And that way, anybody in this conversation uh, if I can, if I can operate Slack, I think that's the other, uh, Um, but I wonder if this um, is in is of interest to the broader chaos community and not um, strictly the risk group. Um, I so whenever I start spreading the news of things to wider audiences, um, I try to be judicious. I I wouldn't want to invite um, all of the different perspectives that chaos offers to somebody else's meeting um at least not without their consent i think i think there is a there's a particular narrow and there's a particular group of people that are here who 
have this as an interest and have been engaged with the Sadu group and the LF to varying degrees who who may have interests in observing or contributing to this. Um, it's a wider distribution frightens me a bit and feels like I might be overstepping my the boundaries that I have as an invitee. It would be like inviting all of chaos to my brother's house. <laughs> oh, let me check something. So there is a an openly accessible Slack channel for the to do group. So yeah. if it's pushed in that, then I don't see why sharing it with chaos would be a problem because that's like I, I joined it without any like approvals, but I'm would almost you, never in it. Do you remember, yeah, me neither. I, I have the same situation. Which channel is it on? Uh, it's, it's just the to do group channel. I found it on their website. No, but I mean, is it in their general or their events? Or well, I'm, their... I'm, I'm going through it now just to see if I can find a reference to this. Because if it was selectively shared in the to-do group, I would say don't. If it was broadly shared in this Slack, I would say it's not a problem. Gotcha. Okay, they've okay. been blasting the survey. Japan working group meeting. Do you know, when did you get an invitation? I've, I've had this invitation since uh, OSSNA. Right. If you share the link with us, then I can see if I can find a reference to it. So you said you put it in risk? Uh, I, I put a lot of the info in risk. I don't know if I put the actuals. Well, yeah, so the it's actuals called the... Ospology. Okay. Yeah. So, so I can just I, do I a general search. Yeah. Um, so there's an open GitHub on it. Uh, and But it looks like the actual work is happening in some particular working group. They posted about it to general. Uh, but the actual conversation was on West offline. It says there's a couple of posts about the view, like you can view the recording or the discussion on GitHub. Yeah, I'm seeing those as well. But I'm not seeing a like, here's how to join the call. Yeah, I'm not either. Let's so I would say maybe not inviting all of chaos then. Yeah. I think that makes the most sense. All right, why don't we move on to the next topic if that's okay. Um, uh, Lucas, do you mind if I just jump to the document for David just because we've got him here? Oh. And um, so David, this is, you may recall that this is the quick uh, guide for evaluating open source software that we made a copy of so as not to wreck the efforts of the other group that you're working in. Okay. And, and they are, and they are working to wrap it up. So uh, that, that's, they, they've been working hard on the one page on just, you know, what to do yourself, but this is the other half and they are working to complete this up. So if you have good ideas that should be merged back into the main, uh, I think it'd be good to do that. So how would, um, okay, so uh, I've never merged Google Docs. <laughs> I do, don't even know how one does that. Uh, did you make a lot I of changes? You, yeah. I think it's just yeah. like side by side edits. At least that's what I've done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, David, could you talk oh, more about did, the, um, the group that's doing the work? Like where, where is that happening? Okay. I did that's... share it with all the other people who are on the other document. Yeah, but they're not going to care. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they're, um, uh, I don't know how I don't know how what other people do, but uh, I'm drowning in the sea of docs, so I don't look at the docs that I actually need to edit. So, um, and if anything, it'll be confusing because uh, if they start editing this one again, that's not the document the rest of the working group is. So. Um, uh, quick context, because I know some of you know this well, but I don't know that everybody does. Open source, whoa, okay. The Open Source Security Foundation, OpenSSF, their overall goal, improve security of open source software. They are primarily divided into working groups. One of the working groups is the best practices working group. 
which does well what you can kind of guess. Okay, so education efforts and uh, the Open SSF badge fit under that. Okay, uh, one of the things we've been working on is a one page guide for developers on how to uh, for on how to develop secure software. It's actually not specific to open source because for most of it, it's all the same stuff. And then there's a companion guide to evaluating open source software because one of the things almost all developers do is reuse open source software. Okay, the companion doc is the one that uh, Sean started from, but um, that one because the uh, the one page guide, the other guide. They've been focusing on first. They haven't gotten as much to this one. But the goal is to also make this one page. We'll see if that actually is workable, but that's the idea. Uh, so what do we, I don't even know what you're doing here. Click on I'm, random. Well, right, right now I'm going to download them and as a separate activity, see if I can merge them. So this is this is our version, and then this is the original version. Well, no, that's and, the current version. Right, the current because version. People, yeah. again, and where did that W come from? Did you add that? I don't. I, I don't know. Maybe I did. I, I removed it. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, Google Docs, as I think everybody knows, me you is simultaneous edit. So whatever the current version of the doc is is the one you get normally by default. Anyway. Yeah. 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 So this is. Um, so it's be... currently too long. It really needs to be shortened down. Um, but. Uh, you know, I and many other people have been pressing on other things, and so we just haven't gotten to wrapping this one up. I'm just going to put this in the, um, I'm going to put our version in the chat, David, and I don't know if we just want to spend like five quick minutes scanning it and getting your feedback to see if it diverges significantly from okay. ideas Can that you, you think. Can you share the current one too? I'm kind of curious to see where that one went. Okay. We also, yeah. I will say that, David, yeah. we went into this doc with very little context okay. yeah. and just kind of had at it. So I think having what you just shared was very helpful in terms of what you're trying to do with it, because I don't recall that from the last conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. Um, I mean, context is often helpful. Um, I'm, I'm going to work on sharing <laughs> that other link. Here we go. Oh, wait. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't, no, it's uh, the we, same link. Yeah. You're, you're editing the, the main document. This is a... It, this is a yep. disaster here. Let's let's not do that. <laughs> That's a bad I could, idea. I pasted you're, you're, the. You're going to get. I, uh, I'm confused. It, it you're you're like going to get people link. saying, "Please don't do this." Uh, all right. So. Yeah. Let's. Uh, These look like the same link that I'm sharing, but. No, they're not. Okay, they're I'm going to make a note. Yeah, I'm going to add the, uh, okay, I'm going to add that as a note. Actually, you know what, let me make that, make a slightly different note. Okay, so I have taken the, uh, your, your comment from the top and put it into a comment mark uh, connected to this. Okay, John? Okay. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, because basically they're trying to bring it down to one page. <laughs> we did nothing to help them do that. Yeah, so there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the basic idea is to be very similar to the other document, which I probably, why don't I share a link to that? Uh, although it's actually the, there's a link within this document to get you there. Um, all right, let, I'm in the chat. I'm going to put a, a link to its companion document. And, and, uh, Sean, you might want to open this one to get an idea of what, what they're kind of trying to do in the chat. Our, our group chat right now, our Zoom chat right now. Okay. Because that's a further along pair of this that uh, I think will help. Okay, I'm opening it, all right. Okay, so this is kind of what they're looking for. Okay, one page, 
Here, title, what is this? And a long numbered list with links. Okay, so this would be a this would be in place of the document that we have been editing, or no. we did edit. No, 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 no. This is no. the format. I okay? see. They're looking for something very short. Here's what you need to do: links for the details. The, the, the idea here is that a lot of people don't want to read a 300 page document, okay? But I, they still want to make things. So you want to give them the highlights and link off to details. I mean, towards the goal of um, you know, supporting OpenSSF's mission, which is getting open source software to be more secure, communicating right. well is, uh, is a bottleneck. And communicating well generally relies on saying less. Less is more when it comes to getting the important points across. Yeah. I'll, I'll, now, of course, there's always a you have to be careful because if you don't say if you say too much less, you don't say enough to be actionable. You know. I, but I agree in general. You want to say the minimum necessary to be actionable. And this is strange because it did fit on one page, and now it's not anymore. And I don't know what's. It might yeah, be page fits on one set page, up your browser. So, yeah, that's kind of weird. It's one page for me. Interesting. So anyway, the, the, the point is a relatively short, but each of these is pretty straightforward. Uh, study secure software development. Basically, we're talking about education. Making sure everybody uses MFAs, inviting software before you select it, and that links off to the other guide that you've been looking at. And then there's other stuff. Okay. Okay. And they and those two docs actually cross relate because unsurprisingly, to develop more software, uh, to develop secure software, you need to evaluate your dependencies before you bring them in, which brings you the other. And when you evaluate dependencies, you want to determine if they're trying to do making, uh, if they're trying to make secure software, which brings you back to this one. <laughs> so there's a there's a cross ref between these two. That that. Almost sort of makes sense. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so, so um, hopefully, I mean, Sophia has a, a good point. Context is is darn helpful. So hopefully that gives better context. So the OpenSSF Working Group, um, Best Practices Working Group, this has been one of their items to do is um, developing basically this one-page guide. For developing software and a guide for evaluating open source software uh, before you bring it in and uh, they have some other things they're doing a lot of stuff on education but that's so big that that's divided out into a separate sub working group a uh, separate sig underneath it okay yeah that makes that makes a ton of sense yeah, so um, I, I think if if you if if uh, if we've got some helpful changes to that evaluating guide, awesome. But let's not fork it, okay? We, let's yeah. try to find a way to bring in the good stuff into the other doc. But I would not want I I mean a diff might be use might be of some interest, but I don't think you want to just copy paste all the changes. Really, that would be a bad thing. I think what you want to okay. do is figure out what's important and only bring those in okay and and um and and improving this I'm document to... by the way is on my personal do list but i keep getting other things on my do list <laughs> yeah so if you were to describe just uh briefly david the like a the elevator pitch of the purpose or mission of this document compared with um, the other, this other one. So this is the guide for developing more secure software. Presumably then this is the guide for evaluating whether or not you should even include some piece of open source software in your universe, right? You got it, you got it. It's supposed to be obvious from the title. Okay. Um, Again, communication, Short, relatively short words. If you can't figure out what the goal of this thing is from the title, we chose the wrong title. <laughs> yeah. So the, the next meeting of that group is uh, next Tuesday, the 19th, from 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific time. 
Um, I believe that is correct. I will share the agenda and meeting notes into the chat here. And it seems to me that um, the thing to do is to directly interface with that group. Although, David, you're kind of, you're sort of on both sides. So I have indeed on there. both sides. And in fact, I wrote both a large portion of these docs. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, absolutely, um, I am I am all for and try to encourage interaction between different groups of people to collaborate together. I mean, it's it's almost like that's the point of a foundation. <laughs> so um, we're running a little low on time, and I wanted to work on this yeah. other item that's that's pretty close to being ready to ship. Ah, D David, David, is it okay if um, we just show up and, and sort of add our thoughts to this agenda? Um, you sure don't keep done. Uh, um, you you can, but if it's simply, hey, I want to edit that document. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, what I would do is create suggestions in the document itself, but make them as okay. suggestions. Don't just edit. Oh right, the, yeah, no, because then, then it's not obvious, right? But I I would think about each one. Remember, the goal is to be short. So the um, I'm actually planning to start accepting some current changes because it's gotten so messy. It's hard to figure out. And I don't think, I think many of the changes are not controversial. The bigger problem is trying to shorten it down. And that's always hard to do with a group. You know, we, anytime you've got a group, you know, want to add more words and we've got to have sometimes counteract that. All right. I, I will, what time is this meeting? I don't see it on the next Tuesday. At what time? Uh, seven to eight Pacific, I believe. Okay. Seven to eight, so that's on nine o'clock next Tuesday. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, sounds good. Let me move over to um. So next topic. Our, yeah. Jeez. Okay. Here we go. So I think uh, in our last discussion, we were pretty close. We we were wanting to check again on this. Um, I think Kate, especially who I don't know if she's. I don't think she's been able. It's using a pageless format. Okay, got it. I don't know. So this is the update risk, which originally emerged from Lucas's question regarding legacy patch support, and uh, we made a number of edits. Is this the right version of the document, Lucas? Uh, it, it is. Um, I have incorporated all the edits and comments that were submitted. Okay. However, people might object to how I did that because I had to, you know, do what editors do. So it's not always literal. All right. Uh, I, this is the first time I'm seeing this one. My apologies if I've missed this. Yeah, this is a little bit different than I remember seeing last time as well. If you um, look at the, yeah, at the version, at the history, can. you'll see it. Yeah, go ahead. Is that Luke? Luke, who's speaking? Is that Lucas? No, I I'm so. speaking. Uh, I'm saying like I don't see the like question in the metric template. Like we have a question that we want to address, rather than yeah. a, just a description. So maybe. And I don't okay. seem to have access to the version oh. history. For whatever reason. Let me see if I need to make that accessible. Okay. Now um, thanks okay. for calling out the question, Vinod. Um, I, yeah. think the, I think the next task is to kind of bring this into the standardized template. And okay. say that's kind okay. of like the work item. Okay. okay, okay. This looks like Markdown to me, so, which is fine, but. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's see here. Uh, so I guess the assumption here is that Pat, you know, we're going to estimate the risk based on past performance. Primarily, because that looks like two part two in the description is where all the de information is. Yes. I mean, actually, let me just say 100% yes. Past <laughs> performance will indicate future risks. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and Sean, I've uh, opened up the permissions, which were too tight. So if you look at version history, it should be available. So yeah, this is the previous version then. 
Okay. Is that uh, that's the last time we met? I think that is correct. So then on the 20th, I massaged everything into one coherent document. Okay. And I, I didn't I didn't mean to change anybody's points or neutralize any comments or thoughts. It was intended to be dysfunctional. Okay. So all right, so uh, long term support. What's the likelihood of being able to update based on past experience? And the third is backporting. Yes. This should be a weird point, but I'm wondering if point three should be after point two. Here's my logic, even though this doesn't change the meaning of anything. It seems to me that you're either, you know, the, the risk is either based on an assertion by the project, i.e., I'm going to give you long-term support, or um, frankly, number three like looks like a subset of number one. I, I agree with your point. It's kind of like there are sort of two sides of support, and one is what is the expressed window, and the other is do they actually live up to it? Or, you know what? They may express nothing but live up to it. Yeah, yeah. Which I um, actually is very common. Right, right. I mean, I, I think probably the poster child for this is the Linux kernel itself. I mean, you know, although I guess you know, they actually do have long term, longer term support branches, but I mean, they have a general policy of we ain't going to break you. We will not break user space. There's asterisks and so on. But in general, unless they absolutely have to, they don't. The people base their whole business models on that guarantee and it's worked out for them. Um, I, I generally like that because I think I was struggling with the definition of support, and maybe this is bringing in my own problems, um, just in general, defining what support around open source projects means for various entities and relationships to a project. Um, or in this case, we have more of an explicit focus on security, vulnerability, and compatibility. Um, so I feel like that first sentence, how long is long-term support, can mean a bunch of stuff. But then when you look at two and three, then you're, we're much more concrete in what we're talking about. Um, so I could see that either just combining three with one as sort of just like, because that really focuses what you're, what's something that's more measurable versus support as a construct is just, again, this is like my, my wormy brain just saying, how do you define it? Because it's really broad. There are actually a number of open source projects that make declarations about support, um, which I know other people are very surprised at. But uh, a lot, of, you know, hey, with, this is the supported branch. Um, I will say that sometimes it's coming not from like the project that. and not from the vendor. Yes. Now, by support, they don't mean. Um, if you send any complaint, we'll automatically fix it for you, no matter what. To be fair, proprietary vendors don't do that either. <laughs> <You know. laughs> and anybody who thinks that supported means that they'll always fix everything you whine about is going to be very, very sad. Uh, but what they what they do mean is that um, if they hear about vulner vulnerabilities. Um, they will take them, you know, they'll triage them, take it seriously. And if it's actually a vulnerability, they're, they will fix it. If, um, they, they will fix it and, um, and they will keep fixing those until it goes out. I will warn you that number of projects, they don't do it by time. They do it by version. So we will do this until the next major release. Or we will, like uh, Ruby on Rails, I'll give you a specific example. They always have two versions that are supported: the current version and the previous, the current branch and the previous branch. 
when they release a whole new branch, the oldest branch goes stops being supported, and now they support those two branches. And those two branches are actually maintained. Uh, if there's a vulnerability found in either the current or previous branch, they will fix it and release the fix. They actually do it in some cases for more than two, but that's the that's the level that they do it at. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we measure. Uh, the text says it here seems to imply time. Or yeah, I think numbers. version version numbers is going to be more applicable than time. I agree with that. Should we be specific or do we want to leave it up? Uh, how about incorporating both time and version? Because some people, uh, some are based on the version, some are on the time too. How long is it? Um, uh, um, is the, the this might be? Yeah, the you know version, I think numbers or branches. Yeah, like like some of the operating, some of the Linux flavors say that you know there's an 18 or 36 month support window on different versions yep. Yep. Uh, that they have. I think this captures all three uh, views. Is this branches redundant? No, because no. a version number usually is, it's probably actually not expressed as a version number because a version number is by definition supposed to represent a particular version. So you you may have you may have the you know six point series and the six point one series, and the six point series you'll have six zero zero six zero one six zero two, and but each of those are versions, but it's the branch it's the six zero branch that you're talking about, not the, not the entire version number. So to ranges of version numbers. I would say ranges of version numbers. Yeah, version numbers, sure. How about just tying it to semantic versioning? Yeah, Linux kernel does for this the, too. There's for the projects certain, that use that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, Greg KH, for example, manages what's called the stable branch, uh, so, some several stable branches. And again, they have a, a the first two digits, first digits dot, and then every new edition gets a, a change at the end. So, so if I we're near, we're at time right now, I I think one of the things we need to get at is do we want I, it sounds like we really want to use the either the semantic versioning or the lts support window or both um as kind of the key indicator that this metric references it's not i hear some discussion in both ways i think um semantic versioning is kind of a superset of a lot of versioning practices so even in places that don't explicitly do you know, some, the semantic versioning three level thing have some version of it. They would understand what that semantic expresses. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of you, know, having a way to identify a version is really important and nearly universal. Um, I think semantic version is widely used, though not universally. <laughs> right. It depends a lot on the ecosystem. Like a Windows 3.0 versus Windows 3.1. Whoa. Right? Yeah. Although technically there that's not semantic versioning because you have to have three numbers. It would have to be 3.0.0 and 3.0.1. They do that with, this is actually a good trick because it means you can tell the difference between a version number and a floating point number. Uh, and, um... David, what what about long term support windows? In, in in what is your thinking around those as a as an indicator of update risk? Of, oh, um, and we're evaluating. out of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are out of time. We are. Over yeah, time, uh, actually, you know, yeah. So. I I think the reality is that's uh, that's complicated, and we probably are going to have to, if we're serious about trying to create this measure, we're going to have to figure this out. 
I also have like a, a random monkey wrench to throw in as we're, we're talking about support from the perspective of the project communities. But in some cases, if there is a vendor attached that is providing support that could extend outside of the period of the project maintainer scope, that also can impact this. I just keep always coming back to the Red Hat model where sure. they're gonna support some versions for like years. <laughs> Um, and it's much longer than way maybe what the community wants to support, but because there is money involved in it, there is effort to maintain older versions of things that you might not be able to see visibly from the community dynamics alone. May I suggest, and I know we're running out on time, I agree with Sophia completely. I think we ought to have a, it's okay to have a measure, but we need to be expressly clear do you, are you measuring the Linux kernel project or are you measuring the Linux kernel as delivered by Red Hat? Uh, because yeah. I think in many cases, you'll get different answers and it's appropriate that they be different answers. I agree. Yeah. So maybe we should capture that uh, <laughs> somehow. I'm putting it in a note. I don't know if you can see my screen. Okay. I think that um, that's a that's kind of a valuable takeaway for readers of this document that they want to go find the best branch and the best provider, for that, <clears throat> the best right. distro. And, and you know, it's entirely reasonable for them to use this metric and say, "I'm going to choose A instead of B." because even though a is more expensive because it provides me a better value here that i mean that's that's organizations like red hat's value prop i was or gonna say, say or tide lift <laughs> or yeah and that's and that's fine too you know it's it's okay to pay money for value <laughs> yeah <laughs> what else are you paying for uh, not value, <laughs> not yeah. value. yeah <laughs> All right. So, so, so moving well, to, um, to to next steps, I know I, I interrupted you. Do you want to go? I, I, think, I think we probably need to discuss this again in the next meeting, Lucas, because we're out of time. Okay. But I, I think we did make some really good progress on narrowing in on versioning versus semantic versioning versus we, LTS. And I'd say we, we start with this next time so we can make sure we close it out because I know it seems like you want to. Yeah. You want to finish it? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's finish it. Let's, let's have a bias to finishing stuff. Um, yeah, I agree. And I'm sorry, I just, I was very opportunistic with David being here on that one document. So that's my fault. So, all right, I will make this the top agenda item at our next meeting and I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.